Uh, where was I again now? <laughs> How many turns? Oh boy. Welcome to Let's Rush With That, everybody. I'm Jill. And as you saw in the intro, sometimes when people like me who are new at this game of machining are threading, you sort of lose count of how many turns you've come back on the cross slide in order to withdraw from the threads and then come back to it later. Well, thankfully there are things out there uh, to help you do that. And today I'm gonna make one of those things. Okay, so here's what I wanna make. It's called a thread cutting stop. And just to quickly illustrate on how it works, is you've got a screw here, bolt, that travels freely into this mechanism. This mechanism latches on and locks onto the V-ways of the cross slide. Uh, when you're threading, you usually set a zero on your cross slide. And after you're done the threading operation, you would draw backwards. You move your uh, carriage back, and then you put it back. You put your cross slide back to the zero mark. So then you don't have to worry about all this calculating and worrying. It's just one less thing to be concerned about. So today I'm going to make one of these and I'm going to make it in such a way that, uh, you know, if you don't have like a dovetail cutter, then you'll be able to do it anyway. <laughs> So I've got uh, all my blocks made and uh, now I'm going to be cutting a 60 degree um, angle on this thing. Now there's many ways of doing this, of course. Um, if you've got angle blocks, that's one way to do it. If you've got one of these, let me turn it on for you here. You know, this is an angle, what can call it? You could use that. Or you can always raid your kids uh, a uh, school set and use one of these. that I've got those uh, 60 degree angles done for the dovetail uh, we've got to do a whole bunch of drilling we're going to uh, fix these with uh, some bolts and uh, and keep it really really simple so here there's got to be one hole going through for the bolt it's quarter 20 that's the bolt here and that's going to go through and uh, thread into the cross slide. This is going to be held on by a couple of bolts here and here on the other side uh, that will hold this in place. And I'll put some Loctite. And the same thing will be true here. And here, I'm going to cut this. And after I cut it, I'm going to put these together and then I'll drill through uh, two holes Let's see, put this like this I'm gonna put two sliding pins they're gonna go right through into the other part and then there's going to be a bolt in the middle and threads on that, this portion here there I've cut that big part so now it's easier to visualize so let's move on
Okay, we'll clean stuff up and lock tight those pins in place. So, just make sure everything adheres correctly. I'm going to just wash this with acetone. It'll dry on its own very quickly. A little bit of Loctite in here. This is the red stuff. It's pretty potent. Once in, it's not coming out. Well, oh, the place. All right, not a problem. In here. Now, I want them to go in the correct depth, so I'm going to put them here temporarily and take them out. Okay, just tap them in a bit here, take them out, done. Before I get going with drilling holes, I'm going to glue this in place. Now, squeeze that in place. And that's it. This one is all set up. I've cleaned it up already. I've got to put some uh, of that Gorilla Glue and glue in place. Hey, I've put a dab of glue, squeeze it in, and there you go. Okay, let that dry and move on. Now it's time to get this hole lined up over here drill a hole right through, which will be oversized because the bolt has to slide in and out. And, uh, but it has to be somewhat lined up. So what I did is I took a square and uh, scribed a little mark, put the square over here and got a little mark here. So now I'll line things up on the bench and uh, we'll proceed with the hole. It is now time to make a bolt, although I could have used a pre-made 516-18 TPI bolt. I want to make something slightly nicer. So this is the part that will thread inside the cross slide. A little relief for when we're going to thread. This is going to be smooth bore. Uh, and then the rest is the head, which will get knurled, chamfered, etc. So that's how long this is going to be. Time to go to the lathe. example of why I need that that thread stopper <laughs> completely missed my zero so one more time around the dial at the cross slide all right of course now I'm all messed up try that again see what happens <laughs>
Not too slack, not too tight. All right. Let's finish carving out the rest. I'm going to put the shaft at, uh, uh, it's going to be, let me see here, 3 eighths. So here's how this thing should work. You set your zero, right? So, okay, so now I'm touching, and this is set to zero. The compound is set to zero. You pull back on this little thread stopper, and you tighten this up. You clamp it down to the dovetail, nice and tight. All right, so now we've got a zero set. We'll go back, put it back on zero, take out say five thousandths on the compound, and now we're basically ready to go. So let's fire it up and see what happens. <laughs> back to zero. Oh, this is so convenient. This is great. My, the threads are perfect and because uh, I clearly fall right back into the correct groove. So this is a worthwhile experiment. So now I'm going to finish uh, putting the uh, aesthetic touches on this thing. So let's continue. Well, there it is, all done finally. This was uh, not really a simple project, to be honest. This is going to turn out to be a very handy uh, 
accessory, as you've noticed in the clip where we tried it out. Afterwards, I decided to put some chamfers all around using a chamfering end mill. And then I decided to, uh, well, <laughs> use my surface grinder again. So every surface has been surface ground, so everything is equal uh, all around. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. I always appreciate your viewership. Leave me a comment and uh, take care. Bye-bye.